Bing Crosby has been on his summer holiday, but beginning October 3rd, Bing and his crew will return to this, their regular time. So join in the fun with Bing Crosby at this time next Wednesday, October 3rd. From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Philip Martin, Johnny. Fine, what have you got for me? Now, Mr. Benny Wax was insured with Columbia. When did he die and what's wrong with the way he did it? Now, he's very much alive and his business is... He owns Delicatessen. We sure that, too. It's burned out. When did it happen? Last night. We don't know whether Waxman did it himself, but the fire department said it was started deliberately. Police holding Waxman? Not yet. No evidence. Better get down here and I'll give you everything we've got. I'm yours after a shave and a shower. Edmund O'Brien in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the protection matter. Expense account item one, 32.56, train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City after I received from you the necessary information concerning Benny Waxman. I arrived in New York at 3.30 in the afternoon and made my way through a heavy rain to 1078 East 105th, where I found Benny Waxman in a small apartment. A Lieutenant Parkinson of the 15th Precinct was there also. Yeah, Mr. Waxman, then what do you want him for? Johnny Dollar, I represent Columbia, all risk. Insurance? On Waxman's store. Who is it? A guy named Dollar from the insurance company. Come on in, Dollar. The insurance company? Yeah, you know, the reason you started the fire. I had nothing to do with it. I keep telling you. I over and over he keeps telling me, and over and over I keep telling him he's a liar. A liar I'm not. My name's Johnny Dollar, Mr. Wagner. How do you do? We can't pin it on him yet. Some kind of a bomb. He ain't got no story anymore. Yeah, sure he ain't. Like the stuff they use in the war. Not a big explosion. Nobody heard an explosion. But when it went off, it burned good. Incendiary? Yeah. I don't know how he got it, but we'll trace it. Of course you don't know how I got it. I didn't get it. How much was the place insured? 20000 You're not going to get it, Waxman. Look, Lieutenant, I don't care no more. I don't care. Do you hear me? You will. I'll make you care. I didn't start it. There was a man killed in that fire. What? I didn't start it. I didn't kill nobody. I wouldn't. People lived over the store, three apartments. An old man didn't get out. Your company won't have to pay a red cent dollar because I'm going to prove Waxman started it. Why Why would I burn down my store? I make a good living. Tell Mr. Dollar how much money you've got in the bank. You hear me, Waxman? Six hundred dollars. That's not much for a guy who makes a good living, is it, Mr. Dollar? I told you. I told you a dozen times. He told me he gave five thousand to his daughter. It's the truth. You checked the daughter? That's a little tough. We can't find her. She used to live here with her papa, but she's just disappeared, and papa doesn't know where she went. Do you, papa? She... She went on a trip, Mr. Dollar. A vacation? Yeah, I, I gave her the 5000 for a vacation. And he doesn't have any idea where she... I don't. I don't know where she went. He just gave her 5000 for a little vacation. It broke him, but his daughter needed a little vacation. I don't care anymore. I tell you, I don't care. Mr. Dollar, tell your company I don't want the insurance money. You don't get out that easy. I don't want out for nothing. Look, I... you're on a spot. You figured it was a cinch. So many guys like you, Waxman, figure it's a cinch. And forget about guys like me. I want you for a fire and a killing, and I'm going to get you. I'll say it forever. I did not do it. I'll say it till they take me to my grave. That doesn't give you much time. Well, I've got to be going. Uh, I'd like to look at that report, Lieutenant. Yeah, sure. Come along. No, no, I'll check with you later. I want to talk to Waxman. Sure, 15th Precinct. I'll be around until they find out where he got that bomb. Right. You're loose till I get something, Waxman, but uh, do me a favor, huh? What, what? What is it? Try and leave town. I'd love it. See you later. Yeah. Mr. Dollar, go back and tell your company to forget it. I don't want the insurance money. If you didn't have anything to do with the fire, you're entitled to it. I'm going to leave this town when I can. Open a business somewhere else. A another city, if I'm lucky. If you're not guilty, why not take the money? Because I cannot prove I am innocent. What are you afraid of? What? I said, what are you afraid of? It's pretty obvious you're afraid of something. I, I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm just... I'm nervous. Policemen, the fire and everything. That 5000 for a vacation is pretty weak. Oh, please, Mr. Dollar. I, I let your company out of all the claims. 
They don't have to pay me nothing. Now, please, don't ask me any more questions. My cop's out to get you. Look, the law, I believe in. If they convict me of something I did not do, then perhaps it is in payment for something I did to break the law. What? I, I can't explain. Now, please, Mr. Dollar. Okay. Look, Mr. Waxman. Good day, Mr. Dollar. I hadn't noticed I left the building and went out on the street. The rain was coming down harder, so I turned up my collar and started to walk. I couldn't stop thinking about Benny Waxman and his crazy, mixed-up story. A guy who burns down his store with an incendiary bomb is smart enough to have a better story. The 5000 he'd given his daughter for a vacation, that was wrong. Making himself look guilty by telling me to forget the claim, that was wrong. He was scared, not of Parkinson or me, but of something that was mixing up his reason. Maybe I was wrong, too, but I was going to find out. The 15th Precinct was on Madison. Lieutenant Parkinson was in his office. Hello, Dollar. Hey, you look wet. I walked. I'll take off your coat. Thanks. Well, sit down. Thank you. Did uh, you have a talk with Waxman? Mm, I think I couldn't tell you in five seconds. Yeah? What do you think? I'm surprised. And what? I didn't come here to insult him. You think he's innocent? I think there's a lot more to it than just a fire and a killing. Isn't there always? I think he's scared stiff. So do I. A guy who starts a fire... Has a better alibi. You want some coffee? Yeah, sounds good. That should be. My wife gave me the electric pot so I could have my coffee on duty. Says I drink too much of it, but she gave it to me anyway. Here you are. Waxman didn't start that fire. Is that strong enough? Mmm. Tastes pretty good. Guys who burn down their business do it two or three different ways. Not with an incendiary bomb. I've got to ride him. I tried to be nice to him, tried to get it out of him, but he's too scared. Of what? Well, now I have to guess. There's a protection racket here that covers every independent store in the city. It's the tightest, best-controlled organization I've run up against. So tight that we've been trying to break it for a year. Two other stores have gone up this way, but the owners are so scared they won't say a thing. Scared for their families? It's the best thing to be scared for. Waxman's daughter. Yeah. I don't know how she fits. I don't know how the five grand fits. What do you expect to gain by making him look guilty? A long shot. He won't say anything, but uh, maybe one of his friends will. Maybe they'll say something. Now, if they've been scared this long, I've got one friend, a very close friend, Angelino Giuseppe. Business? Yeah, a delicatessen like Waxman. Angelino hasn't got a family, but he got beat up last year. Wouldn't make a complaint. He's scared, too. But he's only got himself to worry about. Maybe if he thinks his best friend is in line for a murder rap, he'll give us something to go on. Why don't you arrest Waxman? Make it look like he's really in trouble. Yeah, I'll do that when I have to. I think his daughter is mixed up in it some way. Most of her clothes are still in the apartment. Maybe Waxman will be contacted. I want to be around when he is. Kidnapping? I don't know, Dollar. But a gang that can put this much fear into people might do anything. Waxman's been beat up a couple of times himself. Never pressed charges, but he's been pretty indignant. From what I can find out about him, he's not the type to pay for protection. Became a citizen two years ago and believes in what he had to learn to become a citizen. Well, maybe the 5000 went to the gang. Yeah, it's possible. His daughter only got in town a month ago. Before, they could only work him over with the daughter here. Well, but if he paid them the 5000 why burn down his store? Uh, I've only been guessing. I haven't got the answers. Oh, excuse me. Parkinson. Yeah. Yeah, I know you. Okay. <laughs> How do you like that? What? It paid off. That was Angelina Giuseppe. He wants to see me. Great. Now, you want to come along? Yeah, sure. Hey, you make pretty good coffee, Lieutenant. I get lucky sometimes. We left the precinct and grabbed a cab. Parkinson didn't want an official car in case somebody should be watching Angelino. We cut across town, and 20 minutes later, we were walking through the front door of Angelino's delicatessen. A small, broad little man with a bald head moved around the counter and walked up to see us. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Angie. 
That's a new man? Uh, Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Mr. Dollar? Hello, Mr. Giuseppe. What do you want to see me for, Angie? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's about Benny. Now, what about Benny? You, you, you're going to arrest him? That's right. You think he burned down his own store? I know he did. What about you, Mr. Dollar? Do you think Benny burned down his store and uh, killed that man upstairs? I've seen the evidence, Mr. Giuseppe. I think so. Mm-hmm. You bring me all the way over to ask me that, Angie? No, 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 Lieutenant. Look, if, if I tell you something, if I tell you something that maybe shows you that Benny don't burn down his store... What? Well, it's maybe going to make a lot of trouble for a lot of nice people. They'll get protection. I could get killed. Not while I'm around, Angie. Well, uh... Come on, Angie. If you got something, give it to me. I was on my way over to pick up Benny. Now, if you've got anything that can save him, let's have it. Well, I, I can prove that Benny did not burn down his place, but I think I can tell you who did. Who? Them guys. Them guys who come around once a week and collect the dough. Tell me about them. Well, you remember when I got beat up last year? Yeah. Them guys have done it. They make us all pay them protection. And if we don't, we get beat up or our families... Who are they, Angie? Well, I don't know their names. I... What's the matter? You better get out. Two guys crossing the street. Yeah, that's them. You better get out. They got the guns. Those are the guys who beat you up? Yes, yes. The police. Look, you better get out. All right, now listen to me, Angie. Act like we're customers. But they got the guns. Do what I tell you. Dollar. I'm all right. Okay, here they come. Now try to act like nothing's wrong, Angie. Okay, okay. I try only to... And uh, give me about eight slices of the Swiss there, will you? Uh, all right, all right. Angie. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'll be right to with you. Just the envelope. We don't want no cold cuts. Hello, Red. Uh. Ah, look out. Uh, no, no, no. Parkinson. What about Angie? I told you, I told Shut you. Shut up. Get an ambulance. Ambulance? The phone, you idiot. Step on it. Come on. All right, all right. How is it? How is it? Is it bad? Parkinson, is it bad? I can't feel much. Must be. Let me look. What about the two? Hello. They've I'm had it. Give me a number. Listen. Hurry up. One with red hair. Yeah. Name's Dillon. He used to work Hello? for the Dutch Fisher. Hello? Dutch Fisher. Yes, Helped set him that. up. He isn't the... And yes. Yeah? Yes. Got to get oh, whoever... No, no, no. It, it was a Parkinson. The ambulance is... Is he... Yeah. It sure is. We'll return you to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Beginning next week, listen for Edmund O'Brien as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Saturday nights on most of these stations. At this time, next Wednesday, the great Bing Crosby show returns to most of these same stations, with Jane Wyman as Bing's first guest of the season. Another premiere next Wednesday, the Red Skelton show will also be back on CBS Radio. Remember, starting a week from tonight, Bing Crosby returns to his usual time, and Red Skelton moves his lunacies to Wednesday on CBS Radio. Now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. It was still raining when they carried the lieutenant out. I explained everything to a nice young cop named Brenner's. Angelino and I got into Brenner's car, headed for the 15th precinct. How long did you know, Parker? I just met him a few hours ago. Yeah, we've been trying to crack this protection racket for a year. Looks like maybe we've started. The hard way. Yeah. I'll need your statement, Tom. Sure. I'm scared. I'm really scared. Oh, nothing to worry about, Mr. Giuseppe. We'll give you all the protection. We protection? Yeah, I guarantee it. For me? Sure. Well, what about all the other people? All of my friends? Well, well, well what about the Benny? Parkinson didn't think Benny started that fire. I well, know I was assigned to check on the bomb. Now, why do you think we intercepted nothing before, huh? Because they threaten us. They threaten my friends. They tell them if, if they say anything, they're going to hurt their family. What about the bomb? Nothing. Didn't have much to go on in the first place. You lied. 
It's a lieutenant alive. He told me Benny wasn't going to be arrested. That's why I was going to tell him about those guys that beat me up. Somebody had to talk, Andy. Oh, sure. I talked, and look what happened. What do you think is going to happen to Benny now? Because I talked, huh? They got his adult. I ain't going to tell you nothing more. What about Benny's daughter, Angie? No, no. I ain't going to get to nobody in the moon. No more trouble. The trouble's happened, Angie. Well, I don't care. If they're going to make it tough on Benny, they'll do it now. Just because I, I called the lieutenant. Just because I, I want to help Benny. The only way you can help Benny now is to tell us what you know. No. There are too many other people. My friends. Yeah, we can save them. Tell us what you know, and we'll get the people who make the trouble. No. Okay. When they drag Benny's daughter out of the river, I hope you think about it. Oh, you think I want it? You think I want to see Benny's little girl? Look, I, I got to think about all the others. Listen, listen. You think this won't happen again if we don't get the men behind this? I don't know. Look, Angie, you got beat up last year. Benny got beat up twice. Stores have been ruined. Benny's place was bombed and an old man burned to death upstairs. Well, but... Parkinson and two killers are on their way to the morgue. Every one of you kept your mouth shut for a year and look what's happened. You think it's going to get better? Okay. Okay. What about Benny's mother? They got her. Who? I don't know. The only ones I ever saw were the two guys who got killed a little while ago. Benny came over to my place one night. He was in an awful condition. He was crying. He said they had to tell somebody. They got his Louise. Did he say why they got her? Benny hated them. He didn't ever pay them any money, so they beat him up twice, but he still didn't pay them. He said they didn't have no right. But he wouldn't go to the police because he wasn't scared for me and, and my friends. Then Louisa came here from Detroit to Michigan, and they took her and made him pay $5,000 to get her back. Why did they burn down his store? Uh, to teach the rest of us a lesson. Those two guys who were killed, that's what they said. They said if I didn't pay them every week, that would happen to me and anybody else that didn't pay them. Did they send Benny's daughter back to him? Tonight. Tonight they were supposed to send her back to him. Will they? Do you think that they will now? I don't know. We drove our way over the wet pavements that reflected the sun as it sank into the river behind us. At the precinct, Brenner's got our statements and took me down to the mug fire to look at pictures of Red Dillon and his partner. That's Dillon. Uh-huh. One, two, three. Six arrests, two convictions, one in this state. Kansas City import? Yeah, most of the arrest that city. It's a bad boy. I don't know anything about the other guy. I think he's new. When will you get a report? That shouldn't be long. Parkinson said Dylan used to work for Dutch Fisher. Yeah. Here's Fisher's package. Uh huh. Mm hmm. He's still doing time. Yeah. Convicted June 1943, sentenced to state prison July same year, 10 to 20, armed robbery. Mm -hmm. Let's see, man. Name's on Fisher's card. Yeah? Convicted with Lou Fleischman. Wait a minute. I remember that rat Fisher got sent up on his big payroll job. Here it is. Lou Fleischman. Convicted 1943, 5 to 10. Released July 26, 1951. No wonder I thought he was a new boy. Looks like the gang stuck together. There was somebody else in that holdup. Had an alibi, if I remember. Never pinned it on him. Might be our boy. I can't remember him. He should be easy to check. Yeah, let's find out. It was beginning to fit. The two strong-armed boys had worked together in Kansas City for a man named Dutch Fisher, who was still doing time, and there was a fourth member of the gang still unaccounted for. In a half hour, Brenner's had the information. His name is Biolotti. I remember now. George Biolotti. We took the information down to the mug file and dug out the package on George Bellotti, the fourth member of the Dutch Fisher gang. Brenner's took one look at his picture, and his mouth fell open. Well, I'll be... What's wrong? George Bellotti. What about him? He's in the city. I know him. Well, let's go talk to him. Uh, no. Now, look. Benny's daughter is still missing. That remark I made about the river could become a fact. George Bellotti is George Bivens. That's the name I know him by. Came to this town about seven years ago. Runs a respectable nightclub. Then pick him up. On what? Suspicion. He's clean in this town. Well, you've certainly got enough in this record to have a talk to him. There isn't much time. If we pick him up, that girl won't live five minutes. Yeah. Where's his nightclub? 
52nd Street, the Yellow Parrot. Why? Well, somebody's got to talk to him. And in your official capacity, you'd never get the answers you wanted. What makes you think he'll give them to you? Because I kind of liked Lieutenant Parkinson. Bivens. Got an appointment? No. Who are you? Johnny Dollar. Now tell Bivens I want to see him. Sorry, you got to have an appointment. I'm going to spoil if I stand around much longer. Spoil rotten for all I care. You ain't going to see Bivens. You get excited like this all the time? Yeah. You'll ruin your stomach. I don't think so. You don't? <laughs> Skeptic. Hey, you at the piano. Which way do I go to find Bivens? Thanks. Name's Dollar. What do you want? How'd you get by Ziggy? He's tied up with a stomach ache. Oh? Uh-huh. Swallowed a fist. Okay, you get rough. What else do you do? Find out things. Cop? I'll make this quick, Bivens, because I have to. Red Dillon and Lou Fleischman are pretty dead. Yeah? Who are they? You worked with them in Kansas City in 43. I did? I forget. Dillon, Fleischman, and Fisher. Together you pulled a fancy payroll robbery. The law didn't think so. Lieutenant Parkinson was shot to death by Dillon. Is that all? Not quite. Well, get it off your chest. I'm busy. Dillon and Fleischman were working a protection racket. Look, you, I... They were just the collectors. I've had about enough of this. I'm going to throw you out. That's just what I want. Now, get up. What do you think you're doing? I'm going to show you. You've got Benny Waxman's daughter. What are you talking about? Sue me if I made a mistake. You've got his daughter. Hey, you're crazy. I... <clears throat> Why, you... Your two boys killed Parkinson and burned down Benny's store. I don't know what you know... Stand up. You busted my nose. We've been beating up a lot of nice little people for a year now. That nose is just a down payment. If you think you can bust in here and go... You know, you keep falling down. You better sit in a chair. Now listen to me, Bevins. I'm in a nasty mood. Besides all the other people getting pushed around, your boys tried for me, too. You're crazy. I'm behind schedule. The cops can't book you, and I'm not going to let you kill that girl to save your dirty neck. Now, where is she? I don't know where she is. Please believe me, Bivens. Dollar. Look, I got friends. They'll take care of you. Who's going to tell them to do it? I am. With your mouth swollen shut. Come on, Bivens. Where is she? I don't know. Where? Where? Warehouse. 14th Street Dock. What warehouse? All right. No, no. Rogers and Sons. Big, big sign on the top. Police department, please. Don't you know it's not polite to listen, Bevan? What do you want me to do? Go to sleep. I gave Sergeant Brenners what I had, and he told me he'd meet me at the warehouse. But in the meantime, he'd sent over for Bivens. He was as good as his word, for in less than three minutes, radio patrolmen were taking charge of Bivens and his entourage. The place looked like a police lineup when I left and headed for the warehouse. It was getting late when my cab pulled up near the river, and a cold wind was moving in from the Atlantic. Brenners got there a few minutes later, and he staked out his men. The girl is in there. I'd hate to go in the front door. Let's go in the window. I'm a second story man. It's hard anyway. Now, don't you ever get business to talk? He'll tell you about it. He's bound to. He'd make a lousy cop. Brennan gave his men orders. Then we went looking for a weak window. We found one in the back, crawled through, and dropped down on the dark, cold pavement inside the warehouse. I could hear a radio from somewhere towards the front of the building, so we picked our way along the wall until we found a flight of stairs and climbed up to the main floor. We opened the door and listened. Hey, you getting cold? Yeah. I wish Bivens would call and tell us what to do with this dame. We kept going, moving as quietly as possible until we saw them. Two men sitting in a small storeroom. The door was open. We could see the girl, tired and gagged. It wasn't going to be easy. There's an understatement. 
thought I'd get them away from the girl. Make a noise. Bring them out to see what it is. Okay. We better separate. You get on that side so we get them between us. I don't want to shoot into that office. Right. Give it about ten seconds and then push one of those crates over. I'm going to have a hung with two. Ah, relax. Hey. What? You hear something? Look who's telling who to relax. I didn't hear nothing. I'm getting the jumps. We've been in this dump for three days now. What was that? You gonna tell me I'm hearing things now? Some, somebody's out there. Yeah, kill a light. What do we do? Shut up. What's this dang kidnapping? That's Shut that... up. Yeah, maybe it's nothing. Maybe a cat or a rat or something, huh? Let's get out of here. Let's forget the damn and get out. I told you to keep your face shut. Now, come on, let's see what it was. Maybe maybe it's the cops. Something was wrong. Bivens with a car, wasn't he? Well, maybe he couldn't. Maybe they got him. Ah, nuts. Come on. I don't see nothing. It, it, it's too dark. And there's the crate. Grab him, boys. Come on. This one's dead. Yeah, the other one's on his way. Well, let's go get the girl. Benny's worried enough. We took Benny's daughter back to her father, and he confirmed the story that Angie had told us. Angie was sent home, and the last I heard, the store owners who had been paying protection to Bivens were planning the biggest block party since the Boston Tea Caper. Expense account item two, $20.80 for two dinners. Brenner's was nearly as hungry as I was. Item three, $16, flowers for Lieutenant Parkinson's funeral. And item four, same as item one, fare and incidentals between New York and Hartford. Expense account total, $101.92. And the next time you send me out on a simple little insurance fire, make sure it's really simple. I don't mind helping people out occasionally, but I'm too old and too underpaid to go back to being a Boy Scout. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Edmund O'Brien can now be seen starring in the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Joel Samuels, Bill Conrad, Sidney Miller, Jay Novello, and Ray Hartman. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Beginning next week, October 6th, Johnny Dollar will be heard on Saturdays at a new time. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to be with us on Saturday, October 6th, when Edmund O'Brien returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our country needs the help of every citizen. Defense bonds provide that help. They help to make America strong financially. They help to curb inflation. They make the individual family more secure. Defense bonds strengthen the military front, the production front, and the economic front. And just as important, buying United States defense bonds helps you by providing you with a safe, sound, profitable investment. Don't forget, defense is your job, too. Buy United States defense bonds today. Strike a blow for freedom. Join the crusade for freedom to get the truth to people behind the Iron Curtain. As long as they're kept in ignorance, the tense world situation may not improve. Support the crusade for freedom with funds for freedom. Stay tuned now for the Virgil Aikens Freddie Dawson fight, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. Wednesday night is Bing Crosby Night on the CBS Radio Network.